Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. So I'm going to carry on analysing Donald Trump, who fortunately is no longer president. There are some um, uh, deranged Trump Trumpsters who continue with these delusory beliefs that he's still president, that he didn't leave office on, 2000, uh, on the 20th of, um, 20th of January, so why did he fly out of the White House? Um, and um, that he was going to come back on the 4th of March, which is the old date when presidents used to be inaugurated. And then I think it's like this sort of doomsday cult thing. Once their beliefs are disconfirmed, that doesn't shake their faith one whit. And there was some other date where he's going to come back and on and on. But uh, even he doesn't actually claim to be president right now. So his behaviour was always as crass as his claims were fatuous. He's never missed a chance to appear on TV. Um, interest in him has waned, but it's certainly not disappeared. Um, he always craved the limelight, um, and he got it. His frequent appearances in the media meant he was a household name from the 90s. I've known about it about, from about 30 years. Not that I take the least interest in, in the, the, the New York property market, and that's what he was most active in. So he was always eager to, to invite photographers into his home. He appeared to have the same interior designer as Saddam Hussein, and the similarities didn't stop there. Um, the personality type, this um, incessant craving for, for adulation um, uh, was, was common to, to both men. Um, anyway, so these tasteless aesthetics, I think, speak volumes about, uh, about the two men. Um, you know, he's, he's very loud in every sense. He's power hungry. His pridefulness is one of his vices. Um, so he needed people to abase themselves before him. Um, that's Donald Trump, by the way, not, not Saddam Hussein. Well, anyway, he, he did resemble the Iraqi tyrant in this and other matters. So his ostentation, I think, was very telling. Conspicuous consumption is, is perceived as a virtue by many Americans. It used to be considered a vice by, by um, Christian fundamentalists, you know, l'embarrassement de richesse, um, that showing off that worldliness was ungodly. Well, no longer, obviously, the prosperity gospel. And um, impliedly, therefore, poverty is shameful. Those who live in pauperism, well, it's your fault, um, as they've been judged in this world. So do they really care about the next world or this one? I, th I think the answer is blatant. So um, it's just taken as a sign of divine grace, this untrammeled worldly success. Anyway, in the 90s, um, uh, Donald Trump was, was a confidant of the Clintons. And uh, he not just socialized, he didn't just socialize with a couple, he donated to them liberally. He was a registered Democrat throughout the worst of the Clinton years. Now, hang about, uh, Donald can't, can't be the sort of dragon slayer against the Clintons for the Republicans, considering he funded them during the worst of their excesses, and he knew exactly what was going on. And by the way, this, this also reflects very poorly on the Clintons. They knew just how foul he was in the 90s, having called for the execution of children for a crime they're proven not to have committed in the Central Park Jogger case, and they still took his money. And um, the racial undertones to the Central Park Jogger case were just unmissable. So um, Donald's reaction to the Republican Party uh, in the in the early 90s was typical of his uh, tergiversation um, and it shows both the Clintons and, and, and Trump himself to be morally bankrupt, utterly hypocritical. So Bill Clinton was a moderate Democrat but there was only one issue in which he showed um, backbone and that was killing those who already had a backbone. It was abortion, um, saying no limitations, an absolutist on this one, an extremist, abortion any time, partial birth abortions, Baby, the day the baby's due to be born, take him, her, part the way down the birth canal and then kill them. Inches from being fully outside the womb. Wow. And despite knowing this, um, Donald Trump, he funded the Clintons. I mean, partial birth, birth abortion is, is, is too much than many for many pro-choices. A lot of them just can't stomach it. Um, so, wow, astonishing. And then Trump then uh, poses as this champion of the pro-life uh, movement. So his subsequent claims uh, of abhorrence at abortion are blatantly hollow. How do they not ring false in the ear of Christian fundamentalists? I suppose they hear what they want to, just like they disregard inconvenient passages of the Bible. So what can be said of the Trumps and the Clintons? Two houses, each alike in perfidy. Sorry for bastardizing Shakespeare there. So, um, and Hillary Clinton's later abomination of, of uh, Trump is, is equally insincere.
So by the late 90s, uh, Trump was a Renaissance man. Uh, so he said he claimed to have read The Bonfire of the Vanities, which was a novel of the time by Tom Wolfe. I never read it. Anyway, in a television interview, he said it's a great book, it's a beautiful book, but he couldn't provide any uh, detail beyond that. Mere generalities, no particulars about the characters of the plot. I, I don't know anything about it. Um, he pretended that the earpiece was defective and couldn't hear the questions. It was just typical of how disingenuous he is. Um, so he has just lied and lied and lied incessantly, and that is his first instinct to lie. And how has he got away with it? And how are so many Republican viewers so purblind as to not see it and say, but they, they lie too. Okay, and they do lie too. Everybody lies, present company included, but I would try to lie as little as possible and only lie if I think I can get away with it, which usually means a lie that's close to the truth. Whereas Trump, no matter how blatantly false, yeah, he'll tell it shamelessly. On 9-11, a certain braggart said, well, now the World Trade Center's been, been knocked down, I've got the tallest building on that street. And who was that? Donald Trump. Wow. Um, how is the average American not sickened at this malapert boasting at a time like that? Because, you know, there's a silver lining through the dark cloud shining. OK, 3000 people might have got killed, but at least I got the tallest building now. Anyway, so Trump was up to his eyeballs in debt by the 90s. He was the king of debt, soi disant. And his lackadaisicalness meant that he didn't succeed at his business misadventures. And yet he still has the temerity to claim to be fantastic at deal making. And by the millennium, no American bank would touch him with a barge pole. Um, he was synonymous with failure. Trump had the anti Midas touch. His lassitude and folly made sure that all his businesses went bust. So Donald turned to banks in the former Soviet Union. Now, why might that be? Why did these state-owned banks lend to him when no one from his own country would lend to him? So um, no one expected to be repaid. So it's probable that he's been a, a Russian intelligence asset since he first visited Moscow in the late 80s, possibly unwitting, an agent of influence. They saw he might be useful to them. They could cultivate him. So Trump is a total failure at business. Uh, so he turned to what he's good at, publicity, um, because he's a, he's a tireless and shameless self-publicist. He um, just loves being in, in the public eye and he would be willing to create a stir with the media. He'll lie shamelessly. Even his towers don't have any, many flaws in them, as many flaws in them. As he said, he falsely enumerates the flaws to make it appear the towers are taller than they actually are. And he was paid to lend his name to construction projects to simply show his face. So he had no role in planning, building, financing or selling these buildings. So um, he was just a brand. Anyway, in the Trump's uh, in, in, in the 2000s, Trump got into another wheeze, education. Now, it's flabbergasting that a man as ignorant and unlettered as Donald Trump thought he could promote himself as an educationalist of all things. Um, it's beyond ridiculous. He founded Trump University, so-called university, not a university at all. Um, so um, it awarded fake degrees but charged exorbitant fees. Trump appeared in the promotional videos for it, eventually had to shut its doors, and was sued for millions of dollars. Why has Trump not been incarcerated for something which is a blindingly obvious fraud? This is a criminal matter, it's not just a civil matter, it's staggering. It's his own Fifth Avenue principle, which he's proved day and again, to time and again, every day, as he said, you know, back in 2015, I could shoot somebody dead in broad daylight on Fifth Avenue, and I would get away scot-free. And that's what he did with, with this Trump University. People spend far longer in prison for, for, for stealing far less, for saying things which are dubious rather than outright fraud. So Trump has long known that rich white men do not go to prison for fraud. So Trump was in favor of the Iraq war, despite his subsequent protestations um, to the contrary. As Orwell said, um, war propaganda never comes from those who are fighting the war. Um, it comes from sort of armchair generals like Trump. So Donald Trump later lied about that, saying he hadn't been pro-war in 2003. He bogusly claimed to have opposed military action back then. Likewise, the Donald was a war hawk on Afghanistan. He then changed his tune when that became the majority view. Now, it's completely acceptable to change your mind. You know, as John Stuart Mill said, when I realise I'm wrong, I change my mind. What would you do, sir? Um, but you should at least tell the truth about your former position. 
to say why you've changed it rather than sort of pretending to be inconsistent all along. Well, he changed it because he recognised that was a politically advantageous thing to say. Anyway, poverty-stricken teenagers uh, get signed up to get killed in, in Iraq. But Trump was up to other things. He was running Miss Teen USA. 15-year-old girls would, would, would pose on stage in the skimpiest of bikinis to be ogled by obese old men like, uh, like Donald Trump. Um, anyway, this was, was viewed by many as, as um, uh, a febophiliac, um, at least a febophilic, sorry. Um, at best, and he's the man embraced by the party of family values. Well, um, anyway, in 2009, Barack Obama became president, and Trump tirelessly spread the canard that Obama was not born in the United States, that was not an American, had no right to be a citizen, much less president, and that was despite even Trump acknowledging that Obama was American on his mother's side. So the child of an American mother is not an American, according to Trump? Wow. Incidentally, Whilst Obama's mother was American, Trump's mother was not. She was British. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and I know citizenship can come, can come through either parent. Despite unarguable proof of, of Obama's Hawaiian birth and American citizenship being published, Trump continued to publicize the flagrant falsehood that Obama was not a US citizen. And this was bought into by white supremacists. Was it because Obama was half black that Trump could not accept him? Um, Trump accepted McCain as American, despite the fact it's certain that McCain was not born in the United States. He was born in Panama. Now, I know McCain was a US citizen. I'm not implying otherwise. Um, but Donald J. Trump showed no respect whatsoever to Senator McCain, despite McCain having served valiantly in Vietnam, being shot down over North Vietnam, being held in horrific conditions in these fetid dungeons, repeatedly tortured. John Mc was offered the chance to go home to his wife and children. He gallantly declined to do so. He would not be repatriated until all his comrades were released. If I'd been offered the chance, I would have been on the first plane out of there if I were McCain. His self-sacrifice is peerless. Yet Trump scorned him for being captured. Staggeringly, veterans' organisations did not denounce Trump for this, for his gross disrespect towards a veteran. Wow. What had Trump done in comparison to McCain for his country? So Trump's incessant self-flattery wowed many. Um, th there's the old adjective that self-praise is no praise, but obviously Trump is too ignorant to have heard of that one. Um, America is a country where bigging oneself up is perceived as meat and seemly. And Donald J used to say, I beat a lot of people. I made a lot of money, not saying it bragging. Well, that's a double, double lie. He didn't beat a lot of people and he was saying it bragging. He's lost billions of dollars. And anyway, avarice is a virtue for some. And I remember Chris Rock saying that some Americans mistake wealth for intelligence. It's not that difficult to make more money if you start out with $400 billion inheritance. Uh, Trump said long ago that the Republican base were amongst the stupidest people on the planet. Well, as a con man, he's an instinct for an easy mark. And that's why the televangelists, they, they milk Christian fundamentalists for their last time. They make regular monkeys of them, the people who believe we're not related to monkeys. Would working class um, people put their faith in a vampire capitalist, someone who so often refused to, to pay his workers? Well, some turkeys really do vote for Christmas. So that the Republican Party convinces the poor to vote for their own impoverishment, and that is their genius. So in, 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 um, in the early 2000s, Trump was um, appear, appearing on television, and he used to speak in standard American, but one word he spoke in a vernacular New York accent, and that was cash, because cash is such an emotive word from him. This this is visceral for him. And I thought uh, that that told a lot. Anyway, that's enough of my analysis of Donald Trump. I'll treat you to another instalment on another occasion. Toodaloo.